In this section, we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing. So this can carry quite a number of marks in the exam. So it's important that you understand the process. And what I want to do in this video is to really introduce you to the concept of what a hypothesis test is and the method of how you work through the problem. So, firstly, what is a hypothesis test? Well, what sometimes happens is that something, an event occurs that we think is out of the ordinary. Okay, so for example, um, we might flip a uh, thousand coins, okay, which we think the coin may well be fair, okay, but we flip the coin a thousand times and we get 950 heads, for example. So that may seem out of the ordinary because we'd be expecting only 500 heads and 500 tails. And 950 heads sounds quite large. So in that way, something has happened that seems out of the ordinary. And this is why we would then set up a hypothesis test. So the first thing that we need to do is to think, right, well, essentially, someone's going to come along and go, right, well, the devil's advocate position is that the coin, in this case, is fair. So we have what we refer to as a null hypothesis. Okay, so the first thing is that we have a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is often written as H0 or HO, okay? And as I said, this is the devil's advocate position. Um, so we think that the coin is fair, okay? So that would be the null hypothesis. And then we also have what's referred to as an alternative hypothesis. So the alternative is that the coin um, isn't fair, for example. We refer to that as H1, the alternative hypothesis. So we might say that the coin uh, is in favour of heads, or the coin is in favour of tails, um, or the coin is just bias, and we don't know particularly which way. Either of the, any of those could be the alternative hypothesis. So ultimately, this is what we think would usually happen, and we've done a t uh, We've made a sample, okay, we've conducted a test, an experiment, rather, and we now have what we think is something that's happening that's out of the ordinary. Okay, and that brings about this alternative hypothesis. So we then need to decide on what is called uh, a significance level. Okay. So the significance level is actually very important. Now, how to explain the significance level? Well, if we take that example of flipping the coin a thousand times, how many times do I have to get heads to convince you that the coin is biased? So, do I need to get 600 heads out of the thousand? Or 750? Or 800? Or 900? Would 950 heads convince you that the coin is biased? Now, what we're seeing here is that there is going to be some boundary, some point beyond which we would deem per that perhaps the coin is biased. Because ultimately, if you did this in real life, if you flipped a coin a thousand times in real life, you could potentially get a thousand heads. It could happen but it is very unlikely. So even though we've set this significance level, so this level, kind of that, this boundary beyond which we deem this to be very unusual, that doesn't give us a very definite answer. Okay, it doesn't say that yes, the coin must be biased, because potentially it could be fair. So all it can do is give us some evidence that would say that the coin may be biased. Okay? It can't say anything more than that. So the significance level is something that would already be set for us. 
Another good example of significance levels um, is if you think about the rivets that are used to uh, put a plane together, for example, to construct a plane, the rivets um, over time gradually weaken because of the amount of force and pressure that's put on a plane during flight. And you set up an experiment to determine whether the rivets are strong enough to continue in, as part of the plane or if they need to be replaced, if they're too weak. Okay, So we need to decide on beyond which level are we going to say that the rivets are too weak to be used and then must be replaced. Now, if you set that bar very high, what's going to happen is that some of the rivets that are perfectly good okay, may well uh, pass the test, that's fine, but there are going to be some weak rivets that will also pass the test because your bar is so high, you set the bar very high, the significance level is very, very small. Okay, So, subsequently, what that means is that potentially you are putting a plane into the sky that has weak rivets, and therefore that could cause a malfunction or could cause a crash with loss of life. Alternatively, if you set your significance level too low, then what you're going to do is you're going to be failing rivets that could be perfectly good. And so you're going to incur an extra cost for the company, okay? the company that's constructing the planes or um, mending the planes. Okay? So you've got to kind of balance that um, level out, that significance level. And thankfully, the significance level is not something that we have to decide on in the exam. The significance level will be set for us. But in practical terms, if you go out into the world and have to conduct a hypothesis test, then you need to th consider the significance level very, very carefully. So once we have that, obviously then you would collect some data. Um, but obviously that's going to be done for us. And then we would conduct the test uh, doing the necessary calculations. Now, we are looking at this from a binomial probability point of view, okay, in uh, this section. So we would use the binomial tables to identify the probability in question. We would check it against the significance level and then interpret the result accordingly. So in, at that point, we would go back to look at the null hypothesis, and if our probability is within that significance level, that kind of boundary, then what we have is evidence that would allow us to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, So that doesn't accept the alternative hypothesis, but it has given us evidence to suggest that the null hypothesis may well be wrong. If your probability is outside of that significance level, okay, so it's too low, or I guess in, in the probability would be higher than the significance level that you've set, the narrow significance level, then what you can then say is that we, are, we have failed to reject the null hypothesis. We can't really say, I mean, I know there's going to be some examples that, that write it out differently, um, but you can't really say that you accept H0 because that, ref that kind of means that you're saying that the coin is definitely fair. You've done this test. Um, the probability is not within the significance level. And so if you say you accept H0, then you're kind of accepting that the coin is therefore fair. However, it could still potentially be bias. We just don't have the evidence to support that. Okay, so we say we either fail, uh, sorry, we either reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so when we're doing these kind of questions, it, they're going to feel very woolly um, in the sense of we're used to just getting one single definite answer. And with hypothesis testing, what you're doing is you're 
mounting evidence to look one way or the other. Okay? There's no kind of clear-cut, definite conclusion that can be made at the end other than whether you have got evidence to support one way or the other. Okay? So in the following videos, we're going to look at some examples and see kind of exactly how we structure the question out.